Hey everybody, here again with another match from Soulfucker in the T28 Heavy Tank concept, this time on Fiery Salient, or as most people would remember it, Prokhorovka. It is basically the same map. It's an encounter match, and this match Soulfucker does something that is a little unconventional um, from the perspective of an NA player. There's no Arty in this match, which means the biggest threat to him is the tier 7 tanks with their relatively high pen guns, or getting flanked by a light tank. Let's see how this pans out. Let's get this show on the road. With a lot of stuttering as it happens. Immediately, it looks like the vast majority of Soulfucker's team wants to cross the rails. He decides that he's not going to go on the one line. Um, I actually for a long time have argued there's not much point going one line in encounter on this map and you may as well just all cross the rails because that's how you control this map. Uh, you can get some good shots out of middle of course towards the hill because there will inevitably be people there trying to get shots down into the cap but for the most part the one line is irrelevant on encounter um, particularly when you have this many tanks going east. Soulfucker decides he's going to take the town which is not something that you would want to do if there was Arty, but because there's none of them in here, it's actually a viable option. Uh, you can use the houses to screen your right side to prevent guys in the hill from hitting you, and then fire at tanks as they head up towards it themselves. Of course, you also have the benefit then of being in the cap. Already a couple of the enemy heavies are rolling in. Soulfucker is getting very aggressive here, actually, pushing past most of the cover on its right side. But he only just now got lit, which is interesting. And it begins. Using the ARL as a screen on his left side, he's able to, once again, do the gun around the corner thing to clean up some of these heavies. The ARL gets a surprising number of bounces for a heavy tank before finally going down. And Soulfucker pulls back a little, uh, sensing that he is in fact in danger here because there's enough stuff on his right side to actually hurt him and somebody has figured out the weak points on this tank. Unfortunately that shot dipped a bit low there and fell into the train rather than into the Cheeto. But this Tiger P is making a pretty tempting target of himself. Some interesting aliasing going on there. It's a driver's viewport. Soulfucker cleans him up. And then backs off a little to give himself more room to breathe. Still an enemy tiger in the cap, still full health. But the enemy tanks have been cleaned off the hill, at least for now. So it seems. And so Soulfucker decides to get to work on this tiger, destroying his cover to give himself a better shot. Somebody else takes down the building, and then it's open season on this guy. That Churchill is potentially a threat, uh, its gun does have high enough pen to get through Soulfucker's side armor, and it has fairly high DPM. However, at the moment, it's occupied by something else. And so Soulfucker is able to clean it up quite handily. Takes a big hit there from his right side. And now... He's only got 65 hit points to play with, which sounds like a death sentence in something this big and slow, but actually, it looks like the enemy tanks have forgotten how to aim. Oh, that's why they're bouncing. That's just special. Uh, I'm not sure why you would aim there, but okay. Of course, Soulfucker's teammates are doing their absolute best to throw the match by hiding in the back. 
it looks like he's going to have to put them on his shoulders and carry them to victory himself. And he doesn't want to shoot this building out because this is his cover to his front and there is still something out there that can pen him, most probably the KV-85. Friendly KV-85 finally finds his W key and moves into the cap. ELC gets taken back to his garage where he belongs, and although Sulfucker takes a couple more hits, none of them are able to pen him, and he now has a line on the Cheeto, although the first shot misses, there's a good chance of getting a second in here. Somebody else gets it instead. And now it's just a waiting game. Enemy IS-2 actually charges up the hill now. Sulfur who gets a decent hit into him. And the IS-2 either can't see him or isn't willing to engage him. It seems that it actually hasn't spotted him yet. Not that it matters, because it's just recklessly charging into two tanks, which is never a good idea. And, sure enough, it goes down. This could still go either way, um, because the KV-1S and KV-3 absolutely refuse to move up. And again, that KV-85 is a serious threat, as is the Dicamax, uh, although it was last seen in A2. It may have moved over here by this time, and it does have a big enough gun to put some serious hurt on the T-28 heavy tank concept, even if it had full health. Soulfucker, of course, does not have full health. He has 65 hit points, so he really can't afford to be hit by it. Thankfully, it's still over on the other flank. The Challenger goes to engage it. Challenger shouldn't have any problem clowning that thing. So if I can miss this shot in the KV-85, it looks like it might have hit one of the wrecks. And again, such as life when you're trying to shoot over a tank wreck. Sometimes they have odd hitboxes that you can't actually uh, see. Like a, a piece of debris just has a bigger hitbox than, a, than the visual model and you'll hit the wreck instead. It's really frustrating and it needs some looking at, I think. T-25-2 gets lit, and with that being a much easier shot, Soulfucker decides to take it, rather than try and hit the KV-85 over all those wrecked tanks. Very unlucky bouncer off the back of the 3001, I think that is. Um, again, I have a really spurgy FM uh, config that renames everything. It actually hit the rear armor plate from the side and skipped right off. So that's, you know, there was no way it would have panned. It's just bad luck. However, it's all good. Um, Sulfur can't keep his gun traverse on the 3001 because it's just too quick. But it's charging to its inevitable death, so it doesn't really matter. And he cleans it up there. The Dicamax actually managed to take out the Challenger, which is really fucking embarrassing. Um, the Challenger has a turret and really high DPM. The Dicamax has neither a turret nor a fast firing gun. It, it, I just, I don't know. I really don't know how that Challenger lost to it. Well, I mean, I could look at the XVM tab. Oh, that's why he lost to it. Um, but. You know, even a 45%er in that situation should be able to deal with a different axe. It's just ridiculous. Sulfur finally cleans up the KV-85, who was hiding behind a wreck. Surprise, surprise. And is able to cap out. Yet again, using this thing's bizarre armor scheme to his advantage. Uh, he did get penned a few times there. Obviously, some people figured out how to pen the thing and got good angles on it, but that that last couple of hits uh, where he was backing away with his front to the enemy and they just kept aiming at the thickest part of his tank's armor, um, 
shows that puppies have still got quite a bit to learn when it comes to fighting these things. Eight kills and about four and a half K damage. I can't recall if you got any blind shots in because I'm a terrible person and don't note these things as they happen, but either way, I think anyone would be happy with this match. Um, probably not happy with the teammates that caused it to be such a close one, but nevertheless, that must have paid out quite nicely in experience. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.